A, we are still kind of working and sur uh, surviving <laughs> coronavirus too. So I'm trying something again. It's so, Facebook is being weird. Let me try mm -hmm. one more thing. And yeah, don't worry if you don't have your camera on. That's totally fine. Hopefully everyone. I love your setup, Catherine. So many Thank you. plants. <laughs> it's almost like Laura's, but real plants. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Cool. Uh, all right. Let's give everyone a couple of more minutes um, and I'll share the link to I'm going to mute myself just for a second. All right, still trying to go live on Facebook. It's it's trying. <laughs> Well, if for some reason we're not able to get Facebook to go live, um, we'll definitely, I mean, this is being recorded right now anyway, so we can always just throw it in the group when we're done. Um, but it is definitely having issues. So I will keep trying to do this um, as we, you know, kind of go through, go throughout. Um, I'll keep trying Facebook. It might just be something going on with my machine too. Um, good old good old technology. Um, but yeah, so I'll keep trying as we go through. Um, but you know, we're, we're about five minutes in, so we can go ahead and get started. And yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll keep trying on Facebook. But um, so yes, if you're new to the um, Brightly coffee make, uh, change maker coffee chats, haha, coffee maker. Um, I think we probably are all coffee makers nowadays. <laughs> Um, so as we, as we come together, um, we want to share actionable tips for people to con consume, to take while they are, um, you know, while we're all at home. I mean, you know, when we think about what Brightly means to people, we want everyone to come together and create change in a community fashion. And right now, a lot of that is um, needing to be online and virtual. So yes, like Lisa was saying earlier, this is our fifth coffee, uh, coffee chat. And uh, previously, they were more um, just conversations between Lisa and I in the community, and that's awesome. Um, but one of the pieces of feedback that we heard from the community was that they would love to have some a little bit of structure um, to the topics that we talk about. So this is our second um, expert co-hosted coffee chat with Catherine Kellogg of Going Zero Waste. She is just the go-to resource for all things zero waste, and of course, Brightly um, community members love anything zero waste. It's like one of our top uh, questions that we get asked all the time. And one of the things that I personally love about the concept of zero waste is that it literally can touch every single piece of your life. Um, and, you know, whatever portion of your life that you are like particularly passionate about, you can get involved. So like if you're really into cooking, you can kind of go all in on the cooking level of zero waste. Um, if you love lattes, but you don't love making them yourself, well, you, you probably go out to a coffee, uh, coffee shop every day or you used to. Um, so you can, you know, find ways to use reusable cups and things of that nature. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to talk much more, um, but the way we, these usually work is, um, you know, Lisa and I will kind of engage Catherine in a conversation. If you have a question, and like I said, well, I'll try and go live on Facebook and again in just a second. Um, but if you um, if you've got a question, feel free to either ping it to us in the chat, um, or you can jump in. Um, feel free to do that. And like I said, we'll have this recording available live. I'm sorry, um, well, live if we can, <laughs> but later um, on YouTube and all of our channels. Um, actually, our last coffee chat that we did, we're seeing quite a pickup of folks that weren't able to make it um, in person and seeing a lot of really interesting streaming activity afterwards. So. Yeah, um, with that, with that, I'd love Catherine, um, just welcome, would love for you to say, hey, give our audience like just a little bit of um, background as to who you are. And then Lisa and I will kind of just, you know, we'll jump in with the convo. Sure, so hi everyone, I'm Catherine Kellogg. I am the founder of goingzerowaste.com. 
I am the author of 101 Ways to Go Zero Waste, which I actually have one right here because we're at my desk. So cool. It's like 101 Dalmatians, but like not. (laughs) um, Speaking of Dalmatians and dogs, are we going to get to say hi to Janet? Uh, yes to Janet. <laughs> so Catherine knows, um, actually we literally just posted a picture on Instagram a few minutes ago. So yeah, I actually <laughs> adopted a dog recently. Her name's Scout, but she also goes by Janet, which is hilarious. Um, yes, we will have a peek at Scout as our um, extra special guest um, towards the end of this. So we're super excited. <laughs> so excited. I'm so excited. Okay. And um, the last important piece of information about myself, I am the spokesperson for Plastic Free Living for National Geographic. So those are my like titles, logos, um, all my things. <laughs> and I've been living a zero waste lifestyle for over five years now. My blog just had her five-year anniversary on um, the, uh, the 31st of March, which is really exciting. And yeah, you guys can find me at going.zero.waste on Instagram, which is where I interact with a lot of people, or of course on my website, goingzerowaste.com. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Catherine has over 150,000 followers on Instagram and yeah, definitely one of the leading experts in the zero way. So uh, we, we, I know Laura interviewed on the podcast and I will probably have even more questions about zero waste and just jumping in. And again, a reminder for everyone, well, first of all, welcome. I know people, more people are tuning in and we'll hopefully figure out the Facebook situation. But if not, um, but if not, we'll drop the link. Uh, I actually added the link to the Zoom stream in Facebook. And um, as we are talking, I'll try to share the links um, in, in a few of our communities uh, as well. But yeah, let's start um, with, yeah, <laughs> very basic question, but what does zero waste mean? <laughs> it's it's like, not what? that basic, right? I feel like every time we ask somebody what it means, we get 8,000 um, answers. So yes, Catherine, please, what do you, what do you think zero waste means? And what it means so, for you, yeah. The technical definition is to send nothing to a landfill. That is how businesses interpret it. So I'm going to get into a little bit of history, if that's okay. So the history of the term zero waste first came about in 1970 by a guy named Paul Palmer, who took chemicals from companies who no longer use them and then sold them to other companies who were looking for those chemicals. His company was called Zero Waste Services, and that was the first time we've ever heard this terminology. Now, since that's a very industrial term, that's a business application term, zero waste was first used to be applied in home life around 2010. And so for me, zero waste living is so much more than just what we put in our trash can. If the only thing we're looking at is what we're throwing away, we have a very narrow view and a very narrow scope of the world. The definition I personally like is to completely write waste out of existence because there's so much more that we can waste. We can have a waste of time, a waste of money, a waste of resources. There's so much more that goes into that. And zero waste living has definitely transitioned more into sustainable living. But I think the reason why zero waste is so catchy and so sticky and why people really like it is because it's so tangible. Often when we think about making an impact on the environment, that's very vague. And that is a very large concept. And it's like, huh, okay, what, what does that mean for me? And zero waste living is a way to really nicely frame those ideas. And it's a great place to start because it's something that is so technical and something that we can absolutely visually see because many of us cannot see greenhouse gas emissions, right? Like you can't see them. And so trash is something you can see and something that you can control. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's become so popular. That's awesome. Laura, you want to jump in with the yeah, for sure. And full disclosure, I'm also still trying to work on Facebook. Um, but yes, yeah, so from, from my perspective, I think what is so exciting to most people about zero waste is something that you just touched on, Catherine, which is that it gives people a tangible thing that they can do to reduce their carbon footprint, to reduce the waste they're obviously putting into the environment. And I think, you know, as we talk about various sustainability um, issues and, and topics on Brightly, a lot of people are just overwhelmed. Um, they're mm-hmm. overwhelmed, they're confused, they're not really sure where to get started. And so for us, like recommending that people think about the amount of waste they're creating is like just a really easy step. I mean, the other piece of advice that we repeat all the time, which is just like buy less, right? And buying less things is also a component of zero waste. And so from my perspective, um, I found it really interesting. And actually, as we talk about how we've all been at home more um, and have been, you know, just more around and like have a little bit more time to maybe pause and think 
think about things. Uh, I think waste is a really good way to kind of, I don't know, almost have a bit of a mindfulness exercise. Um, we actually noticed that we had a lot more trash this past week um, than we've had in the past few weeks. And so my husband and I were kind of just going through and a lot of that was because we were getting deliveries um, and we had like packaging waste happening. And so just taking that time to be mindful. Um, but Catherine, I wonder if you could share a little bit about um, anything that you found yourself doing in the past few days or weeks, really, since all the COVID-19 crisis has happened. Um, and if, if not, then of course, there's always like everyday tips you could share too, I'm sure. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I've actually had several interviews um, these past few days with major media organizations who are like, zero waste is huge. And what, what's going on right now? And I'm like, oh nothing <laughs> nothing is going on like for or, sure <laughs> like the opposite of it going on is what's happening so you know i we took our it's been you know we've been sheltered in place for six weeks and we took a full trash can out to the curb um we have a pretty we have a pretty small one it, it's it's i think it's like three feet tall so it's not huge or anything but still we took out a full trash can which is the first time we have ever done that in five years like, which is crazy. And things that's insane. Different. That is, I, I just have to say, like, that's the first time you've done it five years and you did it now. <laughs> like, I mean, like, that's definitely worth like, yeah. I mean, so maybe number one, we can all learn is like, don't get down on yourself if you feel like you're maybe making a little bit more waste than usual, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually just did a post about that on my Instagram today because I think supporting small business is super important. And there are so many small restaurants that have supported me in bringing my own containers and supporting me in my, my journey to reduce waste. And after this is over, I want them to still be there. So I'm choosing to support them, even though that means takeout containers right now. So we've gotten takeout containers. Our bulk bins are completely saran wrapped. Our food is packaged in plastic, like our bread packaged in plastic, like things are just different. Life is different and that's okay. And I think I see this one of two ways. The first way I see it is that this is actually the best, one of the best things that could be happening for zero waste. And you might think that's crazy, but I think zero waste has focused on food for far too long. And I'm from Arkansas, which is not a green, <laughs> I mean, it is green. There's a lot of trees there, but it's not the most eco-friendly progressive state out there. And I know what it's like to live in a town where the only thing available is a Walmart. And telling people when you're only focused on these like beautiful, like farmer's market, grocery hauls, like all these things are like, my life doesn't look like that. My life can never look like that. I don't have that access. I don't have that opportunity. And right now we have leveled that playing field. We have completely leveled the playing field and that no one has access to any of that. So I think it's going to create a lot more empathy, a lot more kindness. And what I think is going to happen is I think that we are going to start seeing consumers demand that companies take responsibility for their packaging because honestly it shouldn't be on us it's on the manufacturers who produce and create it and we're going to have to work together to find better solutions for the environment and i think it's honestly one of the best things that's going to happen um and that's my, my optimistic side coming out like that's how i hope to see this but right now we know that there's a plastic crisis we know there's a packaging crisis and right now we rely on packaging due to the current environment. So we have to blend both of those together. And I think it's going to create a better future for everyone. Absolutely. And the other thing I want to say too, is I feel like, um, I mean, I don't want to get into anything health related because we're not um, doctors and we're not the CDC, but sometimes I wonder, maybe this is just a question I can pose because I'm not sure the answer is to, but I wonder sometimes if the, the um, increase in packaging is giving us a sense of false security, right? Um, and the reason why I say that is because you know, I've read personally articles about like how you need to be sanitizing um, all of the cardboard and all of the packaging that's coming into your home anyway. So to me, it's like, well, if that's, if that's necessary, which some people are saying that it is, you know, what, what is the difference there? I mean, it's just a question I have, like I said, I'm not an expert. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure there's reasons why they're doing it. Um, but it, it is definitely disappointing, I think, to see the amount of, um, 
the amount of packaging now being created, but also realizing that in, in certain cases, it's definitely needed. I also noticed when I was in line at Trader Joe's, um, you know, they're not, the lots of places are no longer letting you bring in reusable bags um, because, and, and that makes sense to me, right? Because those are like in your home, they're like actively exposed to you and potentially like other people that could potentially have COVID-19. Um, so that made sense, although it is sad to see. Um, but yeah, maybe that's not a question, just more a general thought, but um, yeah, so <laughs> sorry. My question. Just random thoughts here. Uh, my question would be, so how do we start? Like if we don't know anything about zero waste or we know a little bit, but we're kind of a little bit overwhelmed, especially right now during COVID-19, but where would you recommend to start your journey, your zero waste journey? <laughs> well, you know, I always recommend that everyone starts with the big four and mm -hmm. none of those are applicable right now <laughs> because that is coffee cups, water bottles. I guess water bottles could apply. Water bottles, straws, and grocery bags. So we have automatically eliminated three of the four without even being a possibility in today's environment. Also, yes, uh, most of our, I'm not sure where any of y'all live, but where we live, there are signs saying you're not allowed in the store with your own grocery bags. And I do have a tip for that, which is try and grab a box from the stock room. I know that a lot of grocery stores are offering boxes too, where you can be like, hey, can I just grab a box from the stock room? So that's an easy way for you to take something that is already in the waste stream and then use it and then hopefully recycle it. As far as water bottles, most of us have drinkable tap. Um, tap water is actually more regulated than bottled water. Bottled water is regulated by the FDA, which has much lower disclosure and safety standards, whereas tap water is, is regulated by the EPA, which has much higher standards of what clean water means. So for most of us, we have clean drinking water out from our, from our sinks, which is also much cheaper than bottled water. So if you don't particularly like the taste of your water, you can buy a filter. And I think that's a great way that you can have a positive impact on the environment right now is getting a filter and making sure that you're drinking water straight from your tap. No, that's that's super helpful even for me because um i laura did the interview with catherine so for me i'm uh, relearning everything and of course on brighter that eco we have some other um zero waste tips um so um yeah maybe we can talk about composting i know composting is especially now we're all cooking three thousand times a day at <laughs> home so uh can we chat a bit about composting and where to start and how to think about that Composting, I think, is one of the best things that you can do for the environment. It is, there's so, there's so many fun facts about composting, but one of my favorites is methane, which is a greenhouse gas that's on average 30 times more potent than carbon. 16% of all methane emissions come from landfills because it's organic matter that is unable to decompose or break down. So that is a one place that we can have a really positive impact right now. And there are so many different ways to compost, whether you live in an apartment without a balcony, an apartment with a balcony, or that you have a backyard. And I can go over some of, and, and I'm a terrible composter. Mm -hmm. I'm the worst. I, I, I doubt it. <laughs> no, it is, I have sent 2000 worms to worm heaven. May they rest <laughs> in peace. I have tried every type of composting. So I'm going to tell you the foolproof ways that I have succeeded in composting. The, the first is to, oh, it looks like we got up on Facebook. It says live oh, on Facebook. Oh, yes. Yay. Hi, everyone. Oh, my God. Live Finally. on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <Hi, Facebook. laughs> so that's exciting. That's great. Yeah, I'll be monitoring comments on, and questions on Facebook as well. Okay. So composting. Easiest way if you have a small balcony or a backyard is going to be a tumble bin. This is a bin that has a small handle. I recommend getting one that has two compartments so that way you can fill one up. And while that one's composting, it'll compost in about a month to six weeks. You can start filling up on the other one and you just crank a handle. So easy, so simple. The next easiest one is many places offer businesses or services that will handle it for you for a very small fee, sometimes for free if it's done through your city. This is the most foolproof way. This is the way I currently compost. Because once again, not a very good composter. <laughs> and then Bokashi bin. I think Bokashi bins are actually magic. Like they are magic. They are these small bins that you put underneath um, your sink. I mean, you don't have to put it underneath your sink, but it's a small bin, small enough to fit under your sink. And you can put anything in there and it breaks down with enzymes. 
They also have electronic composters, like the food cycler, which is really interesting. And that'll turn into compost pretty much overnight, electrically, except it's more of just like ground, it kind of just like grinds everything up, but you can take that and immediately put that in plants. And if you're really worried, you're like, what am I gonna do with all the compost once it's created? People will snap it up, I promise. You can put it on any free cycle group, Craigslist, something like that. People want your compost, they want it. So you put it up there and they'll, they'll take it. That's huge. I mean, for me personally, um, so we used to compost a lot more when my husband and I used to compost more when we lived in San Francisco. Um, cause I believe at the time it was, I think it was required. I can't remember, but anyway, we figured, Hey, let's, let's give it a shot. And so we have just gotten lazy and haven't done it here. And I say the word lazy because it's really not hard. <laughs> so like I can, I can, I don't often call myself lazy, but I can, I can give myself that little bit of a, um, motivator <laughs> because it's not difficult. I think for us, it's just been just not really thinking too much about it. That being said, um, as we again have been spending more time at home, cooking more, um, trying to use more fresh ingredients um, that we are being, you know, cognizant about making sure we're sourcing correctly, right? Um, we think that composting, we need to get back to it. And actually, Lisa, you've been starting, Lisa's um, started a little greenhouse in her backyard. So um, you're going to need all that compost, girl. <laughs> yeah, I, and we have a composting bin that I, I'm saying I'm the worst composter because I, I get, I'm just starting into, in the garden just because we've been sitting here for, for a month and going crazy. But um, yeah, I, I need to actually start using it. But otherwise, we're composting all of the food just like with the regular bin provided by the local people. Yeah, and so... Um, so for people that are new to composting, so I know that, you know, there's, there's these little like sort of countertop, um, little waste, uh, sorry, composting pails you can buy, or I think sometimes people use just like even like trash cans and things like that. So Catherine, what are the ways that you've heard of people kind of doing this or maybe the, the way you do it? I personally used one of those little pails when we lived in San Francisco. I need, I think we've got ours in the garage. I need to go find it. <laughs> So I, I hate the pail method. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there. I hate it. I really like having clean counters. Yep, same. And yep. <laughs> I love clean counters. So I actually have a bowl in the freezer and I just put all my stuff in the freezer. It never stinks, it never smells, you never have to worry about it. And you can just take it out and it works great. That's huge. I've like literally never heard of that. And that's such a good idea because you're right, it wouldn't smell in the freezer. So is it just like um you just you've got like a bowl sitting there and you just throw stuff in? Yeah, uh, it's an old, it's a nine inch cake tin. It's a nine inch round cake tin that I just have in there and I just fill it up. And what's great is you put it in and then it freezes. And so, I mean, I'm also very lazy about taking my compost out. I probably only do it once a week. So it gets very, very full, but because it freezes, it just creates like a compost mountain. Like <laughs> you put it in and then it just freezes to it. And so it just like stacks up and then I just take it out and then I bang it on the side of my compost bin and it all falls in and that's amazing. I mean, truly, I feel like that is such a good tip. I never would think about it. I've I mean, never thought about that's it. it. Yeah. I mean, like even, so here's something that we struggle with. Like, so my husband loves onions. This is random, but he loves onions. I'm not a huge onion fan. I like to use them when we cook, but he's like going to put them on toppings and everything like that. And so, you know, a lot of times he'll want to cut one up um, and then it smells. And so I've like tried putting it in the fridge, but it sounds like I should just put it in the freezer because that might help get rid of that smell. Interesting. Yep. And here's a tip. So for your onions, I don't know, like onion skins or like partial onion, anything like that, if, just save it and you can put that and like your celery leaves and your carrot tops and like garlic husks and onion skins, all that, put it in a bag, save it till the bag gets full. I have a stasher bag and I actually, I, actually the bag I have that I use to store this in is a gallon Ziploc bag that I've had for six years now. It's that's an old it's school the, Ziploc bag. <laughs> it's in the freezer, so I don't really like, I'm not, it's not liquid and it's in the freezer. So I'm not worried about any like transition of like chemicals or toxic, anything toxic. I'm not worried about that. So I just take it, dump it, put it in my crock pot, cover that stuff with water and then let it simmer. And then you have homemade veggie stock um, from, from things that you would have compost. That's, I love that tip. That's amazing. Um, and yeah, if anyone, I'm um, just as a reminder, if anyone uh, wants to jump in, maybe you have your own zero waste tip or questions, feel free to unmute yourself um, or post a question in the chat. 
blogs too. Um, yeah, since we kind of started talking about kitchen and cook, uh, food and cooking stuff, what are some zero waste cooking tips? Since again, we are all confined right now, and I'm, I feel like I'm cooking three thousand times. Or maybe some good recipes too, because I feel like Catherine oh, yeah. like has or just like ideas of recipes. I feel like you've got some awesome recipes. <laughs> We've, we've talked, we, we had a phone conversation about this a few weeks ago. And so this is, I think this is a really good tip. I, I'm excited about this. So this is going to sound wrong, but stay with me. Beans. I know beans are like having like a huge boom right now. Mm. And beans are becoming a very, very popular thing to cook. They last forever. They're great. They're plant-based protein. Eating plant-based proteins are a lot better for the environment. But I think buying a one pound plastic bag is better for the environment and so much cheaper than buying cans. One pound of beans will create five cans worth of beans. And the packaging is a lot less. I will say though that using cans, they are the one of the most recyclable things that you can use. They have 100% recycle rate. They've got really good domestic markets. A can can go from your curbside bin back to the shelf in 90 days. It's one of the most efficient systems we have. So I still like cans. I really like using cans. However, cans, because they are, you know, there's a lot of liquid in those, they're very heavy. So it is a large emission cost of transporting those around the country. And so that's why I personally choose and have been buying the one pound bag of beans also because it's just a lot cheaper. And the best, fastest way to cook those is to just dump all of them in your crock pot, cover them with water, turn them on low, and you'll have beans done instantly and they'll be perfect. And then you can put them in mason jars and you can freeze them, put them in your fridge and preserve them for a lot longer that way too when they're fresh. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, I think beans just in general, you're right. They, they're just so flexible and they provide like also just really easy ways to uh, just get protein, you know, just give a lot of fill, you know, just great stuff. Um, so one thing that I was curious about, Catherine, is I, um, we... A lot of times, especially as we think through, sorry, the, our scout, scout slash Janet is making some noise in the other room. It's just trying to be my new puppy. Um, one thing that I thought was, has come up a lot has been the waste that we're now creating with cleaning because we're all cleaning a ton. Um, and that's fine. Like we should be, we should be disinfecting things, et cetera. So I wondered if you had um, any tips on how we can reduce our waste while we're cleaning. So I know that there has been obviously like, okay, so according to the CDC and anyone always double check with them first, but they're saying you have to have at least 70% alcohol in order to kill this particular virus. Um, hydrogen peroxide also works very well. Two things that I always keep in my cleaning kit, even though they're in plastic, is isopropyl alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. Those are two of my favorite cleaning ingredients when it comes to natural cleaning. So I have those in my kit and I think they work really well. That is personally what I am doing. I like having control over what's in my products. I don't DIY everything by any stretch of the imagination, but I do like having some sort of control and that is one easy way to do it. Cleaning was actually the very first zero swap that I made because it's something that's easy and expensive and effective. But I think one of the best tips I guess I could offer is just reusable towels. One of my favorite one of my favorite, this is, this is one of my favorite swaps because it's also one of those like save a lot of money swaps. But when you're cleaning, you want to look for something that has a wide weave, like a bar towel or something that's really good at absorbing liquid. Because I feel like one of the main pain points in cleaning is that you're pushing water around instead of absorbing it. So looking for a cotton fabric that has a large and wide weave will help absorb a lot of that moisture and will make cleaning much easier. That's huge. Yep. Absolutely. I feel like um, we also get different questions from people around like microfiber and like whether or not microfiber is like a good material. Um, you know, it, it does create um, specific downstream impacts in the environment. And, uh, you know, th there's always like a, a sliding scale when we think about um, what is like the best for the environment. And I think if you are really, um, you know, wanting to cut down on your waste and create rags, and let's say the rags aren't as, absorb as absorbent, excuse me, as you want them to be, maybe try microfiber then, right? If, if that's going to prevent you from throwing away paper towels every time. So yes, totally agree. Like, I think it, I think it's such a great idea. <laughs> My, my only recommendation with microfiber is just get a bag, like a gubby bag, and it'll catch all the microplastics, and then you can feel better about that choice. Oh, that's awesome. 
in terms of when you're washing anything microfiber yes or made from plastic polyester downcycled water bottles anything like that any of our plastic fabrics Mm, yes, yes. I have a question from Grace. Um, Grace says, you mentioned empathy as a positive side effect from COVID-19 from people who save lots of zero waste, uh, who have lots of zero waste resources. Have you noticed any positive zero low waste side effects for folks who are new to zero and low waste living or even those who have previously resisted the idea? So like with, for me, like we would rightly, we like to say this is kind of general, not just about zero waste. We see this COVID-19 crisis as a, almost a way, like a global reset for us. Um, how, you know, suddenly we realize what's important and what's not important, what do we care about and how we should be spending our money, how important is support to, uh, how important is to connect with our families and friends we haven't talked in years. Um, but also, yeah, how we, what we buy matters, supporting local businesses. And we, we, we are like Catherine, we think that uh, we will go out of this crisis in, on a positive side because we will know what's important now. So can you talk a bit more about like specific zero waste um, aspect of this? I think that's what Grace is asking. Yeah, that's a, a really good question. And I, this is more of my thoughts. I feel like it's really hard to kind of see everything that's happening while we're in it. And I think it will become much clearer on the other side. But from what I can see right now, as far as side effects, positive side effects, negative side effects, um, positive side effects. I mean, everyone I know is making banana bread and bread. So <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping- Everyone, that, all the banana bread. <laughs> so what I'm, I'm hoping, and also a lot of us are, using and really looking for ways to use our food waste, getting the most out of our food. And I think people, as they're doing these things, they might notice like, wow, that didn't take as much time as I thought it was going to. And they're also thinking, huh, maybe I could do this in the future. Maybe this is something fun that I can continue to do. I'm learning new skills. I'm learning new ways of creating and making and being more part of my personal supply. <gasps> She's so cute. I'm in love. Okay. I think we're becoming more a part of our <laughs> own like supply chains and we're understanding them a lot more. Exactly. I feel like a lot of people are ask, ask, starting to ask questions of where do things come from? Because when we show up to the store, we're like, oh, it's just going to be there. Oh, it's just going to be on Amazon. Oh, I can just buy it, click it, get it, want it delivered. Right. And that mindset is starting to shift because that's not what is available right now. Now we're like, oh, well, where do our cabbages come from? Where did that come from? And I think we're starting to have a greater recognition and appreciation for where our products are coming from. So these are things that I'm hoping that people who are just starting are kind of maybe making these connections earlier. And maybe people who have been very resistant to the idea are realizing that maybe some of the things we do aren't that different mm -hmm. and actually quite normal. Yeah, no, I think you, you're you exactly right. Because right now, like I'm starting to garden. I had been gardening, like, again, just as, as, as a small, funny project for me to do, like, obviously I'm not relying on like supply of my food and my gardening skills. But apparently people are selling out of like um, people and small companies selling out of seeds right now, because everyone suddenly was like, oh, wait, what if the food supply is not going to be there? What if I can't place an order on Amazon? Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. Laura, you want to introduce Kaut? <laughs> yes, sorry that she was a little bit of an interruption, but yes, this is our special guest today. Her name is Scout. <laughs> she is a rescue pup. We think she's about eight weeks old, um, and she is a great Pyrenees mix as far as they know. So she's going to be a big girl, but she is, she was just running outside with her big brother, um, who she is very much enjoying having fun with. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> she's so cute. Hey, girl. Yeah, she's good. I'm going to put her in her cage in a second, but she wanted to say hi and, and say hello to everyone. <laughs> Does anyone? My, go I ahead. Say my, my very first, like, no longer quarantined goal is to come give Scout a hug. That's, like, number one. On <laughs> yes, please. Gonna please. going to hang out with Scout. <laughs> she would love that. Um, but, yeah, we, um, you know, we are inspired by all of these stories of shelter animals um, needing homes right now. And 
one of the great things coming out of this crisis, which we can't really say there's too many great things happening, um, but one of them is that people have been adopting more and more shelter animals. So um, we have, I actually have two other dogs. I never thought I was gonna be a lady with like a dog pack, um, but we, um, one of our dogs is older um, and our middle dog, the big brother now to Scout, um, really loves his older sister. Um, and so we thought it would be nice to have another friend along to kind of <laughs> help ease up on some of the, the uh, playfulness that the um, older dog has to kind of deal with from Big Brother. So yes, they're playing all the time. Um, but Lisa, I'll let you kind of keep going with a few more questions um, and I'm gonna put her back in her little crate right behind me. Um, I have a kind of a product related question in terms of when you're starting your zero waste journey, like um, the, the, comp the compost products that you mentioned are great. What are some other products that you can maybe substitute in your everyday life in the kitchen or anywhere else um, where we can start with buying, buying products? Feel free to drop, you know, if you know any brands that are selling great zero waste products too. Yeah, there, there, this is something I love. So when I started, there weren't many brands available. Yeah. And now there are so many brands who are doing really, really great work. And I would absolutely encourage you to look for brands that have a give back portion. I feel like look for brands that are giving back, looking for brands that are doing sustainable things with their fabrics or with their um, recycled content. And yeah, there's just so many that are doing wonderful things. But before it even comes to buying, I think it's really important to ask yourself, do I really need this? And when I started going zero waste, I was on a really tight budget, very tight. I made a lot of zero waste swaps out of financial necessity before I even knew what zero waste was. And so I was on a really, really tight budget and I was very, very selective about what I brought into my life. And I've seen several YouTube videos of people being like, I regret buying this zero waste thing. And I was thinking about it. I only have two regrets. There's only two things I ever regret buying. And one of them were was a set of reusable bags that I saved up for that I was so excited about because they had slots in them so that we could put your jars in and they wouldn't clank around but the bags mm. were so poorly designed that the slots were up too high so the jars just fell through and it just didn't make any sense like there was no structure to it so that was like my one regret was buying the wrong bags and then the second one was a pair of stainless steel straws and that's it those are like the only things that I really ever regret buying but I have a larger one that I use for boba and smoothies and then I have my glass ones which I absolutely love so those are like really the only two things but that's because I was so selective about what I brought in and made sure that the purchases I was making were actually serving me and my lifestyle so that's my those are my tips make sure they're good and make sure the brand's doing good that's awesome. No, we totally, we have been researching obviously zero waste with Laura for Brightly as well. And, uh, you know, following your account, but there are so many zero waste companies out there these days, which is great. We actually just got, if you guys um, want to check them out, we just got um, our first order from Zero Shop. And I will let Catherine maybe look at it later. Um, but yeah, like all of their packaging is, uh, you know, either glass jars instead of like plus, even like chips are in a glass jar or spinach and um yeah the packaging is pretty cool like i haven't experienced that uh before and since they're a smaller company they are not as sold out as some other bigger food delivery companies right now um Ooh. cool i had a follow-up question but i'm blanking you've got a there's a question of oh yes that was, <laughs> yeah that's a great one yeah uh, katie is asking do you have any tips for teens young adults who still live under a parent's roof but still want to lessen the carbon footprint that's a great one katie yeah so i actually have a great blog post on this it's called 10 tips for going zero waste when you live with your parents and I also have quite, a, I have quite a few blog posts on um, how to go zero waste when living with roommates, because your parents aren't quite roommates, but they kind of are. Um, it all kind of boils down to the same principle, which is how can you have control over a space that is not completely your own and that you don't necessarily have all the purchasing power in the decision. And you also don't have, uh, you just, you don't have, you just don't have a lot of control. And so it's all about finding the small things that you can do. And I think one of the best things about it, though, is also how to have those conversations and how to bring those decisions together and how maybe you can sit down and chat with your parents or your roommates and talk to them about what you want to do, why you want to do it, what you're passionate about, where you can compromise, where you can find solutions together. Are, 
and I find one of the best ways to do this is also having conversations with people who don't necessarily agree with you. This, this is, everything's all tied in, right? And so it's how can you appeal to people and speak their language? So my dad, for instance, loves saving money, right? So he growing up was old, like, he didn't care about the environment. I mean, this is way before being in the environment was cool. Like I didn't have recycling. I didn't know what recycling was till I was in college because that's just where I lived. That wasn't something people talked about, but I'm telling you every single time I went anywhere, my dad would be like, close the door, save the heat or turn off the lights, save energy. You know what I mean? Put on a sweater. (laughs) Right. Exactly. He cared about saving that money. And so if you can speak to their language, well, dad, I mean, yeah, you like saving this energy and doing this, but we could also do this and we could save water and cut down on the water bill. Oh yeah. We, I mean, my parents refused to buy bottled water because they're like, that's so expensive. Right. So it'd be like, yeah, we could actually get a filter and be saving this much. And so if you can talk to your parents and talk to them about some of the things that you want to do, yeah, you're probably not going to convince them to do a completely zero waste grocery, sh- grocery store run. <laughs> Not that that's possible now anyways, but there are small things that you can probably bring in and lessen your impact and be able to have like also like a really fun family bonding experience as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, and um, we will, uh, for all the participants of the coffee chat, we'll uh, link to the links that we're mentioning either on the Facebook group or in the email, the follow-up email I usually send out too. And um, this kind of brings me also into kind of the thing that we always mention at Brightly is that, um, you know, it's very hard f- to be perfect with our lifestyle. Uh, you know, uh, you, you want to kind of check more, check all of the boxes, but it's almost important. Uh, important possible but what you what you can do is start with your we call it sustainability superpower what's important for you and start there and kind of similar way how you're suggesting it what what is your dad's uh, what is your parents sustainability superpower what do they care about the most and start the conversation there and, then, and lead into zero <laughs> for sure yeah I mean you know and I feel like I'm, gl- I'm so glad that you brought up the honestly the accessibility point of view because I think that Um, There's such a stereotype on anything ethical and sustainable being a more expensive. Um, That's not always true. Um, Sometimes it is. Sometimes you do have to pay a little bit more for products that are made ethically and are going to last you longer. So cost per wear is actually lower Um, or, you know, in the instance of fashion, for instance. Um, But the other thing is, yeah, I mean, a lot of times when we talk to people about going zero waste, people think that they've got to like run out and get all this like gear. When, for instance, um, I was just thinking through, I was cleaning out my kitchen and we have a bunch of those like pop containers to, to store things in bulk. Um, we, we ran out of those and I started to think through, okay, I guess I'm going to have to go buy some more pop things and things of that nature. Well, we also have a ton of items that were going out to be recycled in glass jars. Like, why can't I just use these glass jars that I already was going to send to the recycling area? So I think in general, um, what's interesting about this movement is the fact that we can all be creative and really uh, participate in whatever way that we can. So there's not like any um, zero waste awards like the Oscars. (laughs) If there was, Catherine would be the best picture probably. (laughs) Um, But you know, we we all have to think through what makes the most sense for for each one of us and for our family members. And so, yeah, I, I I'm glad that we talked a little bit about accessibility. I wonder if there's like any other like thrifty tips you have, especially as people are looking to kind of save money right now. So many. So that's actually my favorite thing about zero waste living. That's my all time favorite thing is that it encourages you encourages you to both figuratively and literally think outside the box. Right. This is my favorite thing. I love getting to exercise my creative muscles. And this is, I think one of the best things that anyone can implement is a personal 30 day buy ban. So anytime you see something and you're like, I want it, you're just like, you know what? I'm going to wait 30 days. If I still want it in 30 days, I can go crazy. And just by simply putting a small block and giving yourself time and patience, it allows you to come up with creative alternatives. It allows you to think of ways that you could create something or use something in its place, it gives you time to test those things out. And maybe you're, you realize I don't need it, or you actually really do need it. And that's, and I'm going to give you an example because it's my favorite. So I started, I guess this was two, 
was this two years ago now? A year ago? I, yes, a year ago, I set up my office space and I love making tea. I used to work downstairs at the kitchen table, but that wasn't super, I mean, it wasn't super great. And I did it because I loved making tea. And so I would make my tea and then I'd have my tea and it was just this great because I was right next to the stove. It worked perfect. And then when I moved up here, because it was much better for my mental health to have a separate working space away from my living space, I was like, well, how am I going to get tea? Because if I'm making tea every you know, hour, it's like 10 minutes and that's just not productive. And so I was like, I'm going to buy a like, sorry, I'm realizing this is like such a long story. I was like, I'm going to buy an electric kettle to put up here. So that way I could just have tea on demand. But I was like, before I do that, before I do that, I'm just going to see if there's like another solution that I could possibly make. And so I think it was about day 14. I had a aha moment where I could just take my very large, I could make the entire French press worth of tea and then pour it into my double insul or my insulated stainless steel container and then just carry it up here and then have tea until lunchtime using like one thing that I already owned. So I saved a bunch of money. I didn't require any new resources. I found something that worked perfect for me, but we have been so conditioned to believe that every single problem we have can be solved with a new product. And it's just not true. Many times we have things available at the reach of our fingertips. That's that's a great that's a great advice, and I I love the very specific example, and I love that it's also the, uh, it's actually like kind of kitchen or a, a tool product versus you know a lot of times when we think about stop buying uh, about stopping to buy things, it's like I always think about fashion, right, and things that you wear. So there's another thing that called thirty wear rule. Uh, before you buy something uh, in terms of clothing pieces, it's like uh, will you wear it for thirty uh, thirty times at least? If the answer is not probably you don't really need it uh, but i love the idea of like give yourself 30 days to think and like yeah you'll come up with something creative and of course zero waste also probably starts with using what you have getting the maximum uh, use out of what you have um katie um as a creative person do you think for the plastics and things we already had uh, but cannot just get rid of do you have any tips on repurposing those plastics in a creative way as, or as you're beginning your zero waste journey so i also have a great blog post called what to do with um what to do with old plastic when you're going plastic free and I, I go into some ideas for that. I personally avoid plastic for health reasons. I stopped or I started avoiding plastic uh, before I even went zero waste. So this is quite a long way ago. I was trying to avoid single use plastics. And then I realized there was an issue with reusable plastics too. And the things that can leach from them, like the, the different, like they're phthalates and BPA, BPS, right? We have all of these things that are in plastic. And so I think I personally have downgraded a lot of plastic from food storage, unless it's something like this one old plastic bag I have like in my freezer. I'm not really worried about freezing things as long as it's not liquid and as long as it's not fat. So fat really binds to the plastic and that's one of the easiest ways for the for things to transfer. So no fats, no liquids, but if it's a dry good in plastic in the freezer or in a very cool setting, because also as things heat up, the molecules move faster, it allows them to transfer more quickly. So those are kind of like my rules, but a lot of my plastic has been downgraded. So instead of holding my food, instead it might hold my bobby pens or it might hold nuts and bolts. And there's other ways that we can use kind of some of our smaller plastic things. As well as I do still keep plastic containers on hand, I ordered take out recently i've been trying to support one small business a week or one small one of my local restaurants and of course that comes up with takeout containers and i have washed some of them that were plastic i've washed some of them and i keep them because if i do have people that come over and i host a party i can give those to go also similar with glass jars i reuse glass jars a lot i keep a stockpile of you know restaurant like i have a salt, glass salsa jar right and so i'll keep that in case anyone comes over i can just put leftovers in that and send them home because i do a lot of entertaining and so i do think that there are some ways that we can make sure that we are using what comes into our life but of course the first thing we want to make sure we're doing is reducing what comes in and then reusing what we have but i know that in today's current environment it's really difficult to reduce the amount of packaging we're consuming yeah that's huge and honestly i've never thought to um save some of these things to gift to others. It's such a good idea. Um, we also do a lot of entertaining and 
half the time people just, yeah, we, we end up with all the leftovers ourselves, which is like such a strange thing to be in. Cause you're want to entertain, right? You want to have people over and have a great amount of food and you plan for as much as you can. Uh, we always tell people to be good, um, to not be rude and to actually go to things that you RSVP to because, <laughs> and then in addition to being a better friend, you also help that host reduce their food, um, you know, preparation. But anyway, I love that idea. I think that's great. <laughs> And you should also, so anytime I host, I also tell everyone, one time we had a huge party. It was a Halloween party for like 75 people. I don't have 75 cups. Certainly wow. I don't have 75 plates. So <laughs> on the invite, it said, bring your own cup. Oh. And like we did, and this is also fun. You could also do bring your own mug and you do a competition for everyone who has the best mug. And then everyone just drinks their drinks out of their mugs. And it like becomes this really fun thing. And I also tell people, bring a container, take home some leftovers. And like Thanksgiving, I've hosted Thanksgiving every year for the past five years. And when I invite people, it just says, bring your own container so everyone can load up. But we also, of course, have a few on hand. So just asking people, you'd be amazed at what you get by just simply asking. That's awesome. And yeah, some, another tip about entertaining that we've shared before on the podcast, especially around holidays and Thanksgiving, is yeah, RSVP, be a good friend, but also uh, try to coordinate, like if it's a potluck party, uh, and I've been doing it uh, quite a few times with my friends, and like post in the Facebook group or WhatsApp, however you're coordinating, post what you're bringing, so we have appropriate amount of food and we don't have any food waste as a result of everyone bringing the same thing or someone some foods that um, you know we can't eat right away and then they will go bad really quickly. Uh, um, so I th Laura, are we wrapping things up or yeah, I think I think we're probably gonna go ahead and, and kind of wrap things up. Um, you know, I yeah, think unless someone has a question, feel free to jump in right now or comment um, in them in the chat box. Yeah, otherwise, uh, Laura, I interrupt. Yeah, you. I mean, I think otherwise, so yeah, we were, um, so we've done a few of these now. The feedback has been, um, they're awesome. But yeah, I mean, like what they said, people were like, sometimes they're kind of long. <laughs> So we're like, okay, so we'll try and wrap it up a little bit earlier this time. Um, you know, I hope that this was chock full of information for people. I feel like um, Catherine always has the best, like, she and I get along so well because we both like to, like, hack things. Like, I'm, like, over here, like, doing weird computer hacking, and she's over here doing zero-waste hacks, and I just love it. I think it's such a fun way to be creative um, and use your brain and especially right now especially during the now. time of us all just trying to stay calm as best we can, mm -hmm. trying to keep ourselves occupied if we want to. I mean, of course, you know, self-care and everything is very important too, but kind of go whatever feels the best to you. But if you find yourself with some extra time on your hands and you want to get into a new ethical and sustainable lifestyle habit, you might consider trying a few of the tips that Catherine shared today. So thank you so much for joining us, Catherine. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much. Y'all can connect with me on Instagram at going.zero.waste. And of course, my website, goingzerowaste.com, has over 523 blog posts. I know because I just wow. reform, I just reformatted all of them wow. and it took me forever. So <laughs> there is a bunch of information on there. And uh, yeah, I would love for you to check it out. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Well, please, everybody go check out goingzerowaste.com. Catherine's book is also called 101 Ways to Go Zero Waste. So if you want a book, oh, there she goes. She's got it right there. <laughs> I love it, Dollar. <laughs> but yes, everyone, thanks so much for joining us. Be well, be safe. Um, and if you're not part of our Facebook group, just search yeah. for it. It's called Good Together. I dropped the link in oh, the cool. comments. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just search that if you if you have other questions, um, we'll try and pass them along to Catherine if, if we can. But yeah, feel free to join the conversation there. So thanks so much, guys. Thank Bye. you. Thank we'll you. See you. Thank Bye. You.